When considering the many religious texts and scriptures that were compiled to make the Bible as we know it today, few can point to a scripture that is more intriguing than the Book of Enoch. Filled with awesome and fearful tales of the wrath of God as he literally washed away the sins of all his creations on the planet, it actually isn't too difficult once you know the details that led to the Great Flood that left Noah, his family, and a pair of every animal on Earth as the survivors of what might turn out to be the first apocalyptic event the Earth ever experienced. What secrets of these events lie in the pages of the Book of Enoch? Who exactly was Enoch and what role did he and his descendants play during the events noted down in the apocryphal texts? Were the roles of these patriarchs of the Bible a coincidence or somehow preordained? Today, let's take a look at the secrets of the patriarchs that lie in the banned book of Enoch. It's fair to note that although the Book of Enoch is named after the great prophet and scribe, it's generally believed that the texts weren't written by him. In fact, most, if not all, of this non-canonical scripture of this pseudo-epigraphical text was written long before his time as authors penned the scripture two centuries before the birth of Christ. That being said, the Book of Enoch is filled with many details relating to the sciences of the universe, as well as the secrets of the past that would leave any reader staring at the pages of this ancient script with wonder in their eyes. As some of us might not know, the first Book of Enoch, or One Enoch, might be the most popular of the three books, and it's made of five major sections. The Book of the Watchers, which can be found in chapters 1 to 36, the Book of the Parables, which cover a major chunk of the scripture, the Astronomical Book, the Book of Dream Visions, and the Epistle of Enoch. Within these pages, especially those in chapters 1 to 36, we learn of a time after the creation of mankind and all the other elements around him. Following the disobedience of Adam and Eve and their departure from the haven that was the Garden of Eden, man still persevered in order to blossom into the pride of God. Soon they began to prosper, and as it pleased God, he kept in charge a set of angels known as the Watchers. Also known as the Grigori and the Sons of God, the Watchers were charged to monitor man and never interfere with their activities. Unfortunately, the Watchers failed to follow these instructions to the letter. You'd think the reason the Watchers chose to break this rule was altruistic, but unfortunately again, this was not the case. Spurred by the beauty of the human women, the Watchers decided to ignore the wishes of God and even the reluctance of their leader, Sam Yaza, so that they could descend from the heavens where they were charged to observe the humans and take women as their wives. Not only did this unholy union result in the creation of a giant monster named the Nephilim, it led to the corruption of mankind and the entire planet as a whole. Not only did the angels teach the humans things such as magic and sorcery, these Nephilim ravaged through everything on Earth, consuming the animals, the reptiles, the birds, and even the plants before turning on the humans as they scrambled to satisfy their massive hunger. Insatiable, they soon turned on themselves. Even this wasn't enough iniquitous activity as the Watcher Azazel abstained from the sins of the flesh, not so that he could save the humans, but so that he could corrupt them some more with innovations such as weapons and warfare, things that were certain to tear the humans further and further apart from themselves and the ways of God. What's interesting about Enoch's role in all of this is that it appears that he might have been destined to intervene on behalf of not only men, but perhaps the other entities that walked the earthly realm. What some people might not know is that his ancestry could be traced directly to the first family, Adam and Eve, as he's said to be Enoch, the seventh from Adam in Jude 1, 14-15. This is possible due to the fact that he is the great-great-great-grandson of Seth, the last son of Adam and Eve. As if that's not enough, his ancestry is also filled with other legendary people in the Bible who are either known for their longevity or their prophetic roles in the continuation of humanity and the everlasting faith in the power of God. Enoch was the son of Jared, who was said to have lived up to the age of 962 years, marking him out as one of the deluge patriarchs that lived for several centuries during the antediluvian period, a period that makes reference to a time before the Great Flood. 
Going down the ancestry, even his son, the famed Methuselah of Lore, who Enoch had at the age of 65 lived even longer than anyone else in human history, having lived up to the very ripe and very old age of 969 years of age. Perhaps the most famous and most relevant of the deluge patriarchs in the Book of Enoch is Noah, who was part of this hallowed ancestry and lived up to the ripe old age of 950. Unlike the rest of these patriarchs who lived and died on Earth, one of the most fascinating things about the story of Enoch was that he was said to have had the favor of God with him and spoken in his words, and as such, rather than dying like a normal man, it was said he never experienced death because God took him in a statement that alludes that he ascended into the kingdom of God. Aside from the amazing ancestry, the Book of Enoch also shows its relevance to the scripture of the Abrahamic religions, especially that of Christianity. It introduced us to the Messiah that is Jesus Christ, and it also provided validation to the Christian faith that Jesus Christ was the divine figure that has always been there by his Father's side. Referring to him as the Son of Man in one Enoch, this figure became an important part of the scripture as it was detailed that this Son of Man would be the judge of all mankind following the events of the final battle. Furthermore, stating that Jesus was the Son of Man that predates existence helped clarify Jesus' status as the Messiah because it was previously problematic to those who believed that Jesus would be a warrior much in the fashion of King David, who shall smite the heathens with the hand of God. Although non-canonical scripture, like the Book of Enoch, helped clear those problems as the texts place him as the Son of Man who predated all of creation, evangelists like Paul also used this to convince the others spreading the scripture to all without having them carry out Jewish practices like circumcision and the observance of the Sabbath, as it was said that Jesus was the light of God to all. A derivation from the idea from Enoch that the Son of Man would be a light to the Gentiles as supported by the book of Isaiah. In conclusion, looking through the books of Enoch, one would find many secrets behind many things that occurred throughout the history and the doctrine of the Christian faith. Although it was never truly accepted as canon, the figures in the scriptures of this apocryphal texts and the principles found in them have proven to be relevant till this day. Not only were the figures integral to the continuity of humanity at the time as Noah kept himself pure to the point that God felt that he could preserve him and use him to save the human race, his ancestors, like Enoch, intervened time and time again for not only the humans but the Watchers and sometimes even the aggressive Nephilim. It's clear that the Book of Enoch should be analyzed further to unlock many secrets of the past so that we can continue to walk with God in the future. Well, that's all for today. Be sure to like and subscribe so you can be notified about our next videos. Trust me, you don't want to miss any of that.